And we're literally seeing an epidemic of these issues in the United States right now. Dr. Robert Melillo is the co-founder of Brain Balance Centers. One out of every 10 children in the United States now is diagnosed with ADHD. And that's a real increase. My name is Dr. Robert Melillo. My life's mission is to help kids and families with special needs. My wife, Carolyn, makes it all possible. Welcome to our family. Hello, welcome to our show. I'm Dr. Robert Melillo, and this is my beautiful wife, Carolyn. Uh, let's start this show with making, what's making ADHD headlines. There's two really sure. interesting articles I want to talk about. One is um, an article showing that taking Tylenol when you're pregnant actually elevates the risk of you having a child with ADHD. Which is shocking because every pregnant woman, when she goes to the doctor with a headache or a fever, is told or prescribed Tylenol. Right, because we think it's safer. So this was a large study, 64,000 women. Wow. They followed them from the time they were pregnant to when their children were adolescents. And what they found was that, uh, bottom line is, women that took Tylenol were thir had a 30% increased risk of having a child with ADHD That's in adolescents. And that the longer they took it, the worse it got. So that if they took it for a longer period of time, they had a uh, more severe risk of 40% of having more severe ADHD. That's unbelievable. I mean, so what, what's something else a woman can do, I guess? Well, yoga or? Yeah, there are a lot of different options that we can do that don't involve taking medication, obviously. Sure. But, but mainly what we see is that this highlights the fact that there are environmental risk factors that elevate the risk and people need to be aware of these before sure. they get pregnant. Because Absolutely. if you take it when you're pregnant, it may be too late, and these are things that uh, we see, you know, pervasive. But the good news is it means that it's environmental factors. We can control those things, so it's not really genetic mutations. It's a good thing to know. Second study that's really interesting comes out of Finland, where they looked at 7,000 children, and they found that children that were diagnosed at eight years old with ADHD, they followed them out, and they found that at 16, they were much more likely to be obese and also more sedentary. Well. Also, maybe because they're not as social, they don't join clubs, they don't play sports, they go home, they play video games, they're happy and they're eating and they're, they're not moving. And, and that's one of the biggest problems is that one is that we see that many of these kids are born and right from the beginning they have low muscle tone, they have problems moving their body, they don't crawl properly, they don't walk on time, and they are maybe clumsy and incoordinated and so they don't gravitate towards sports or movement. Right. And what many of these kids, because they're high left brain, they're, they, they are attracted to technology and video games and a lot of people you know they focus on that. They have to get so, the kids out. They have to get exactly. them outside moving. They don't have to play a sport but they just run around right. fresh air and, and yes. not sit in front of a TV. It's so okay. important. So I think we have a Twitter question. Okay from Maynard. What are some of your best practices for handling a 14 year old who has difficulty transitioning from one activity to the next? This is a big thing and this has to do with the fact that again the left brain likes to do the same thing over and over. It's repetitive, and the right brain being deficient in ADHD, we're not able to get them to stop focusing. This is uh, associated with obsessive compulsive behavior. But the bottom line is that you can't really manage these things behaviorally. You need to try to change the brain. Right. So we showed that in the most recent study that we had published through Brain Balance um, that uh, was in the journal uh, Frontiers in Child Development, a major journal, it basically showed that uh, Eighty percent of children that went through the brain balance program um, doing a hemispheric based program that in 12 weeks no longer had ADHD and furthermore there was a two to four grade level increase in academic skills. So the bottom line is we need to be able to really change the brain. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to have you stay tuned because when we come back we're going to talk to one mom about her son's uh, ADHD and how it's improved with uh, the brain balance achievement program and that uh, when more when we return. Great. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Rob Melillo. I'm joined now by Lisa Purvis. Her son Justin struggled with ADHD and they're here to talk about how his behavioral issues had improved since going to the Brain Balance uh, Center. So, Lisa, um, Justin, first of all, thank you very much for being here. Very handsome young man. Um, tell me the story about Justin and, and how you found out about what we're doing and, and my work and, and brain balance. 
Well, he was diagnosed with ADHD when he was four years old, and he had to um, a lot of services, um, speech, occupational therapy, behavioral therapy. He went through all the process of all of this, and, and the problem that I was having was that both doctors and school was trying to push medication on me, and I wanted a non-medical, I mean, non-medication approach for him. Okay. And um, did any of those other interventions, did you find them helpful? I didn't feel as did though he was... Did they make a difference? No, I didn't feel as though he was, for the time that he was putting in all of these different therapies, it was constantly running around taking him for this therapy, that therapy, and I didn't see where it was really making that much of a difference because each year he was still in it and then he had to be pulled out for resource room, put in a class with smaller sizes, right. and it was constant, especially his lack of attention and focus that I had to sit with him to help him stay on task. Right, so and again, all those services are helpful, but sometimes it's hard to see the, the end range of them. So how did you come to find out about, about my work? Because I did research um, to find non-drug alternatives that I could help my son with, and from doing that, that's when I found out about your program. And also, I had gone to a special, special education seminar, and I met Betsy Stober there, and she had a table set up with the Brain Balance Program. So, And you had I read met, my book, Disconnected Kids? Yes, And yes. when you read that, did that connect with you? Did you see Justin in that book? Absolutely. Yeah. It, it just ex described him perfectly. So Justin, um, just give me a brief explanation of what you felt like before you actually did this hemispheric-based program. What did you What did you feel like? Did you, are you remember? Yes. Um, before I needed help to stay concentrated on my homework. Okay. And was school hard for you? Yes, yeah, school was very hard for me. And did you feel like you had uh, trouble paying attention in class or yes, uh, concentrating? Yes, I had very hard time concentrating in class. Okay, so um, he went to uh, one of our centers and, and obviously you've seen some great changes. So what changes have you seen in Justin's? Well, for it's, his success has really been phenomenal because I really never thought the day was gonna come when I, I didn't have to sit down with him to help him with his homework because it's just been really hard getting him to that point. But now he's able to sit down, he's, he does his homework without my help. Um, and I ask him constantly, Jay, you need any help? No, I got this, Mom. And when his report card came in the mail, I cried for a couple of days straight. A plus in biology, straight A's and B's, and he did it all himself. Yeah, you showed me those grades and they were pretty outstanding. So, uh, and you had mentioned that there was a big difference that you noticed. What was that difference? That after I was, after the Brain Balance program, I was able to do all my homework after, by myself, and it was easy to get it done and do homework in class and pay attention in class. And that's a huge difference, right? And, yes. and how do you feel about getting grades like that? Very good about myself. Yeah, it makes a big difference, right? Yes. So one of the things that you used and one of the things that you also found, because you've showed me all these things that you really research, you're a typical warrior mom, someone that goes out there and really researches uh, things, but one was the idea of smells and essential oils. So do you want to talk about that? Sure, yes. And I used the Young Living Essential Oils with Justin. Um, they're the purest, most therapeutic grade essential oils and they really have helped him in conjunction with your program. And he can really speak and tell you which oils he uses and how he uses them. You know, one of the things yeah. I think is interesting is that most people don't realize that, especially the children with the right brain delays, the ADHD, the autism, um, that many of them have an altered sense of smell or a completely absent sense of smell. And that often is why they're such picky eaters. And we're gonna talk about more of that in the future. But uh, tell me how you like the smells. What are the smells that you like to use and how do, you, how do they make you feel? Well, in the morning I use Valor and Clarity. Usually because Valor makes me stronger and Clarity helps clear my thoughts. Sometimes before a test, I also use brain power. That will also help me, my brain work better. And then when I'm trying to do my homework, I will use a diffuser and diffuse some peppermint into the room so I can 
have better memory and concentrate better. Well, that's in my book, we go through what right and left brain smells. We're going to have you back and talk more about that. I want to thank you both for being here today. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's a thank great you. story of inspiration and hope. When we come back, Carolyn will be joined by Shakta Kursa, uh, who will help us show yoga for children with ADHD and autism. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Dr. Rob Show. Joining me is Shakta Kulsa, who's the founder of the Radiant Child Yoga Program. And she's here to share with us some exercises for children with special needs. Before we get started, we had a few mom tweets, some tips on helping their children with special needs relax. So let's go to C. Lynn Williams. Have a child sit quietly on the sofa for five minutes. Well, that could work. <laughs> That could work. Um, um, Dr. Melillo, my child has ADHD, and when he was younger, I would put the ocean waves to his ear. Worked like a charm. What do you think about that, Shakta? Well, that's a perfect tool to use because it helps them focus. And another thing you could do is just have them breathe with it. So when they hear the ocean, they can right. breathe in, and when they breathe out, they hear the ocean. So they can put the two things together and even more focusing, even more calmness than that sounds wonderful. And you yeah. even have your own music that you do with That's the right. children, with the yoga. Right. We're going to do a little bit of that today. Okay. Let's do yeah. it. All right. We have Amelia here, too. So, Amelia, should we put our two feet together and start with the butterfly and the butterfly song? Remember, put your hands on your feet. Ready? And bring your legs up and down. Fly like a butterfly. Fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly in the sky. And now let's put our head down to our feet. Ready? Sleep like a butterfly. How far can you go? Wow, really far. She could go farther than I uh, can. Me too. <laughs> Sleep like a butterfly through the oh night. Goodness. And now let's stretch our butterfly wings up. Put your legs in back. Stretch like a butterfly, stretch like a butterfly, stretch like a butterfly up so high. Perfect. Whoa. Thank you. Would you like to do a little bit more? Elephant. elephant. Let's stand up for elephant. Let's make our elephant trunk, hang it down, and let's swing it side to side. This is good for our balance. And now let's stretch our elephant trunk and make a big elephant sound. Ready? Can you stretch way back? Like now come down again. Good. Now let's take a big breath in and stretch up one more time. Breathe in. And elephant sound. Ooh, perfect. Now while we're standing up, let's try the tree, shall we? We're going to take one foot and put it and make a low branch tree. This is probably the first way that I would teach yoga to children, low branch. I like this. Yeah. And now bring our hands to our heart. And now bring our arms up in the air. <laughs> you know what? Let's do it this way, Amelia. Put your toe on the floor. Put your toe on the floor. All right, now bring your hands up. Now, now, Shakta, how many times a week would the children be doing yeah, this? And come down. Well, um, we would do that once a week if I had a class. Okay. But at home with your own child, you could do it every day. That's true. And you it, have books. It works very well. That parents can use to actually guide them through this. I do. I have a book. It's called Fly Like a Butterfly, Yoga for Children. Wow. And it, it has all these different exercises and poses. Do you want to do the frog hops? Shall we make Carolyn do the frog hops with us? Sure. All right. Let's squat down and breathe in and land on the ground. Ready? Whoa. Another time. Breathe in, breathe out and land. Oh, she's very good Perfect. at that. Perfect. One more. And land. Very good. I can see how children would really embrace this kind of yoga. I mean, this is, I, I'm yeah. having a lot of fun doing yeah, it. Yeah, it's, I can it's see fun and it's focused too because, for example, let's sit down again. And let's focus on our breathing, shall we? Feather, would you like? Thank you. Thank you. 
or let's hold our feather in our hands. Look at our feather. Look at it. And now blow your feather. Did you make your feather move? Um, yeah. Okay, blow again. Take a big breath through your nose and blow. One more time. Oh, that feels good. This helps to focus and it helps them to become more aware of their breath and being able to use their breath. And so then they can call on that every day too. How do yeah. you like this yoga? Are you having fun? Yes. And, you can and may I have the feather back for our next exercise? Thank you. Let's do cobra snake. Are you ready? Lie on your belly. And let's make a baby cobra first. Come on up like this with your arms. Push your arms. Yay! Oh, she's and so good. And come at this. down. Want to do it again? Breathe in. Come on, pop up. Whoa. Let's hiss down. All right, on that note, Shakta, right. thank you so much thank for coming. You. This was absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Don't go away because on the other side of the break, Dr. Rob yeah. will be talking with Betsy Stober, director of the Brain Balance Center and more ADHD when we return. Thank you Perfect. so much and thank you thank so you. much. Drink go. Welcome back to the Dr. Rob Show. I'm Dr. Rob Melillo. Earlier we introduced you to Lisa Purvis and her son Justin, who was struggling with ADHD. Well, one of the people that helped uh, Justin manage his behavior uh, was Betsy Stober. Betsy is a friend and a colleague, and Betsy and I met a while back, and it's actually a really interesting story uh, that we met when I was doing a lecture in Connecticut. But why don't you tell people how you came to the point where you actually came to that lecture in Connecticut? Um, sure. It was really about your son, Karsten. He, it was four years ago, and my son was in fifth grade. He was coming to the end of fifth grade. And the fifth grade teacher called me in and said, we're really worried about how he's going to do next year in sixth grade when he has a locker and switches classes. Um, we're giving him a lot of unofficial accommodations in school, and we think they have to be made official because we don't know how he'll be able to handle school. And she said, you know, there's a real disconnect in how he operates. He is a really smart kid, but I often feel like he can't keep up with what's going on, and we have to redirect him a lot. At home, we were seeing a lot of things like emotional reactivity and um, just a wide range of issues. We kind of thought of him as our, our high maintenance kid. He had no diagnosis, right, but we so. knew there was anxiety. He suffered from chronic congestion and constipation and just a lot of things that made him seem like he wasn't typical. Right, so he didn't have a label per se, which is a lot of kids out there don't have labels. Um, but you said that the teacher kept on using the term disconnect. Absolutely. And there were all these different things going on with his body and there was this unevenness of skills. So then you went into the library and what did you see? I was looking for a book that I could turn to, something written by an expert that I could kind of read and figure out how to help him. And I saw the spine of your book, Disconnected Kids, and I thought, okay, well, she used the term disconnect over and over, so maybe this is the right thing for me. Right. So when you read the book, I remember you told me that you pretty much read it right through, right? Because it really connected with you. Absolutely. Like so many families that I've talked to since, they, I read the book and I thought this was written about my son. How does he know my son? Just really all of the things that we saw as issues were described in the book. And so really the next morning, as soon as they were open, I called the center in Norwalk, Connecticut, um, to talk to them about having Karsten evaluated. Right, and, and that's where we met. I was doing a, a lecture there in Norwalk, mm -hmm. Connecticut, and you came up to me and said, hey, I just read this book, and I think this is going to be great for my son. Uh, there weren't any centers in New Jersey at the time, so you had to actually drive all the way to Connecticut. That's right. So I drove over the George Washington Bridge 36 times for our wow, sessions. Wow, that alone and it was, is scary. <laughs> yeah, but it was the, you know, the best investment we could have made. The program absolutely addressed every issue. Now it's four years later and there is absolutely nothing quirky or immature about my son anymore. He's a 
fantastically successful freshman in high school and plays tennis and you know is just a really happy successful kid. What's really neat is that you're not you were not only committed to helping your son as we see many moms and many people that go through the program and work with my book but that you were so committed that you actually decided that you wanted to open it as a business in your community because you were familiar with a lot of moms and families in that community who were also struggling and you wanted to come and help your com community in Summit. Absolutely, and I also knew that there were New Jersey families traveling to many different locations in other states to have their children go through this program. And I really wanted to be part of bringing it to our community. And um, you know, it's been amazing. We've helped so many kids, and not just children with one issue or a couple of issues, but you know, the most broad-reaching uh, uh, range of issues in these kids. Yeah, and there's a lot of different things that we do. Obviously, we do physical exercises, kind of like the yoga that we just saw, but but more specific. And we do academic type things and sensory stimulation. And there's also a lot of diet and nutrition issues that we have to deal with. So these are complicated issues, and it's all individualized. Absolutely, and you know the families really feel like their families' lives are transformed, not just their children. So they upgrade how they eat, they move away from sedentary screen-based activities. They really just become families who live healthier lives that they feel better about. I think the main message is that you as a mother of a child and as now someone who's worked with um, uh, many, many families, that there is hope that these problems can not only just be managed and compensated for, but in many cases they can be elim completely eliminated. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. And families feel so empowered because what we give them is a blueprint that if they just follow it, they can make all the changes that they want to. And that's the most amazing thing for them, that they finally have a plan that they know can help them be successful. Well, you know, it's great to know. Again, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for your work. I want to thank you for letting other people know about it and for giving that hope every day. People, if they want to get in touch with Betsy um, and find out her center is in Summit, New Jersey, and they can go to the Brain Balance website and they can find your location. Um, again, wonderful story. Uh, great what you did with Justin. Um, so thank you. And thank you to all of our guests today. This was a really great show. We really enjoy it. Uh, we're going to be back again next time for another episode of the Dr. Rob Show. I want to thank my beautiful wife, Carolyn, as always. And remember, there is always hope. We'll see you next time. Thank you.